Are you looking for a camera system to protect your home or office? Something that can stand on its own without the requirements of the cloud, internet, or even Wi-Fi? How about 4K power over ethernet cameras in a kit with everything that you need? Then stay tuned as we take a look at the Ownwoat 4K camera system. Now, Ownwoat has a whole family of NVRs and cameras. These cameras come in different numbers, and types depending on what suits your needs. Now, Ownwoat reached out to me and offered to send me one of their camera kits to take a look at. They also sponsored today's video. So a big thank you to the Ownwoat team for helping support this channel. Now, full disclosure, I only received this kit about two weeks ago, so I haven't had time to dig into all the bells and whistles of the system, but I was able to get it up and running pretty quickly and it's a pretty easy thing to install. If you have a specific question or something that I left off, please let me know down in the comments below. Now, this particular kit comes with four of their 4K turret cameras. Now, these cameras are rated for IP66, which means they can pretty much tackle any sort of outdoor environment that you could throw at it. It also comes with an NVR, which is a network video recorder with a pre-installed two terabyte hard drive. Now, at first glance, this might seem to be a traditional DVR recorder that just records the video footage coming off the cameras, but it does have a few tricks up its sleeve. It does have built-in human and vehicle detection and can segment the video by the type of alert, whether it's motion or person detection. So when you're reviewing your 24 by seven recorded footage, it's much easier to find what you're looking for. They don't actually offer a cloud service for their cameras. It's all done onboard storage. The only cloud service they have is for the application so you can access it remotely. Now this particular kit with the four 4K cameras and two terabyte NVR goes for about $399 on Amazon. But Black Friday's coming up, so keep an eye out on sale prices. And if I find any good sales, I'll leave them in an, a pinned comment below. So let's take a look at the features and find out what comes with the kit. So as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a ready to go kit. It has everything you need in it to set up your camera system. It has cables, mounts, power supplies, and screws. That's why this box is so heavy. So included in the box are four of these little boxes. They contain the cameras and the mounting gear for each of the cameras along with the waterproofing kit for the power over ethernet. So you got four of these boxes. It also includes four 60 foot spools of Cat5e cable, one for each camera. Finally, we have the NVR with the two terabyte hard drive pre-installed. Of course, included is a power brick and an AC cable, a small ethernet cable to connect to your home network, and a tiny mouse to get the system set up. You're also gonna need either a VGA cable and monitor or an HDMI cable and a TV to set this system up. So that is one thing you have to provide yourself. Now, if we crack open one of these little boxes, we'll find the 4K turret style camera. Now this is a fixed camera, so no pan tilt zoom here. And these cameras are traditionally mounted upside down on a ceiling or along a wall, and you mount using this inner ring here. Now this inner ring can be screwed into any surface, and then you just twist the camera back onto the ring to secure it. Once the camera is secured, you can then rotate it to whatever position you want and also reposition the camera in the swivel down here. Now, if you look closely here on the front of the camera, you'll see two bright white spotlights. These are used in conjunction with motion detection or human detection to know when to turn the spotlight on so you get a better picture and potentially to scare away somebody outdoors. Now, one interesting feature of the spotlight is it's also used in conjunction with the color night vision mode. When the system detects a person or vehicle within the field of view, it will automatically turn on the spotlights and then enable color night vision. It also includes a microphone, so you can record audio while recording video, but it does not include a speaker, so you cannot do two-way audio, just one way, listening in on the recording. This is an example of audio at a normal conversational level, about three feet in front of the camera. The camera is mounted at about 10 feet above the floor. Now coming out of the back of the camera is the pigtail, which has the ethernet connection and the DC barrel jack connection. Now the DC barrel jack is completely optional if you happen to be using a non-PoE switch. So make sure if you're not using it to close the weatherproof cover so no water gets in there. If you wanted to use the DC plug, you'd of course have to source your own DC power and then just use a standard ethernet connection without power over ethernet. Now finally, we have a mounting hardware for the base plate and we have the waterproofing grommet kit for the power over ethernet connection. Now on the subject of the NVR, if we look at the back, you'll see the integrated eight port PoE switch. Now the way the system works is the PoE switch and the onboard ethernet port are separated logically. So they're on two different networks. The NVR actually runs its own DHCP server on the PoE switch, which means any cameras you plug in will get an IP address directly from the NVR, not using the IP address range from your network. If this DHCP range over here matches your home network's DHCP range, you're gonna have to change this in the configuration settings, which I can show you later on. Now there's also a network port on here, which obviously will allow you to connect to your standard home or business network. And there are options for direct web access, PC apps, and mobile apps, which we'll go into later on. 
Now, as I mentioned before, there's an HDMI and VGA port on the back of the NVR that you can use for setup and also as a more of a traditional security monitoring station. When you plug in a monitor, it does show you a, st a standard split screen where you can watch all the cameras at once, which is pretty nice. There's also an audio output for speakers and some USB ports on here to connect your keyboard, your mouse, and also to connect the USB hard drive for backup purposes. So let's go see how to get it installed, configured, and set up. Now, as I mentioned before, installation is super easy because all the hardware is included in the kit. So typically you're gonna install these cameras under an Eve Outdoors, under a surface like a deck, or along a wall somewhere. And to demonstrate this, I've mounted them in two locations, one in my unfinished basement and one outside on my driveway. I would have put more cameras up, but it's way too cold right now. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is take the base plate off the bottom of the camera and place it about where you want to install it. Mark the holes, and then you wanna go ahead and make sure you're pre-drilling these holes, that way you don't split the wood. So go ahead and run the three screws up into the bottom of the plate and make sure it's a snug fit. So typically before I put the camera up, if my ethernet cable is long enough, I'm gonna go ahead and put the waterproof gland on on the ground, that way you don't have to fiddle with it up on the ladder. So the first thing you gotta do is take the small O-ring off of the rubber collar and place it over the ethernet end on the pigtail. This will ensure a watertight seal. Then you're gonna take the black end piece and run it over the end of the finished cable. Next, we're gonna put the larger part of the gland over the end of the finish cable. Then we connect the ethernet cable to the pigtail and go ahead and do the quarter turn lock to connect the two pieces together. Then we're gonna attach the rubber grommet right below the end of the fins. Then you're gonna press that up under the fins. You might have to play around with it a little bit to get all the fins out of the way. Then we're gonna take the bottom piece and screw it over these fins. This creates a watertight seal and prevents any water from dripping down into the power of your ethernet connector. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and hop back up on the ladder. We're gonna take the camera and we're gonna line it up to make sure we can spin it into place. You wanna make sure you grab the top of the ring and twist it until you feel it click. If you don't, this will easily come loose when you are trying to adjust the camera. Once you get it locked into place, you can rotate the lower body to get the camera in the right orientation. Now the camera can be pointed anywhere from straight out at zero degrees down to right below the camera. You can also rotate the camera freely in the mount if you're mounting it onto a wall or upside down. Now, if you wanted to digitally flip the image of the cameras, you cannot do that in the DVR configuration. I've got a link down here to the help page from Onwont describing how to do this. So once you got the camera pointed in the right direction, go ahead and connect the network cable on the other end and you should see this green indicator flash to show there's power to the system. After a few minutes, the camera should be detected in the software. So here's a few tips and notes on the installation. You can put other power over ethernet switches in between your NVR and the final location of the camera. That way, if you've got a lot of cameras in one location, you can put a switch out there and you don't have to worry about running each individual connection back to the NVR. Just make sure your power over ethernet switch is not giving out any IP addresses. You can also go ahead and custom cut your own ethernet cable if you need to run through small holes or things like that. You don't actually have to use the included cable. And make sure you close the cap on the DC plug when you're not using it, you don't want water getting in here. Now that you have the cameras mounted, let's take a look at the NVR interface and its features. Now I'm directly recording from the NVR here. Of course, mine's already set up, but I can quickly show you how to use the setup. One. Okay, so here we are, our setup interface. You'll see you only see the cameras that are currently online, which are my outdoor camera and my basement camera, which you can see my camera pointing at. If you look up here in the top right hand corner, every time there's motion detected or person detected, it will put a little red dot up here. So if you're watching these screens, you'll be able to easily tell what's happening on each of the cameras. When you first come in, you're gonna be taken through this startup wizard. So we're gonna click and go through the wizard again. So the wizard's gonna have you set the time and date, whether it's what time zone you're in, time format, current time, daylight savings time enable, then hit next. Then it's going to show you if you have more than one nick in your system. This one only has one nick. This is where if you wanted, you can set up for static address by unchecking this box and setting your static information here. But I've got mine set to DHCP, so it's going to pull this information from my firewall. Now, one field you want to note right here is the PoE nick IP address. Now, if this address conflicts with your default gateway, then you're gonna to need to change this to a different set of subnets. So let's make this 172.17.1 because these will not work together if they're on the same subnet. We're gonna hit next. And then this is the QR code to set up the mobile app, which I'll show you how to get to that a little bit later, but we're gonna hit okay. One of the things it will ask you in your startup wizard is it's going to ask you to set a password. Now, the default password is 123456 and the default username is admin you're gonna be required to change that to something a little bit more secure. But since I'd already set that, it didn't ask me. So up here under the basics, you can change the device name, which is what it will show up as in DHCP. If you have more than one device, language, that sort of thing. So I'm not gonna go through all of these different settings, but you can set holidays, you can add new users. 
blacklist IP addresses, that sort of thing, which for most users are going to need. If we go to cameras, this is where we can set the different settings for our cameras. So here we can rename cameras, we can refresh and search and add new ones if they go offline. Click on this one here and go over and say camera configuration, set the username and password. So if you if you were wanting to add a third party camera, this is where you come in and set the different protocols, IP addresses, ports and username and password. Shows you if it's online, gives you the name. You can click on here and see the details about the camera. Then under encoding, this is how we set what resolution. So you could drop the resolution if you didn't want the full 4K. You can set custom bit rates, all these sort of things if you want to. On-screen display, this will set whether you have on-screen display with the date and time and the name of the camera. This allows you to change some settings for the image like exposure, brightness, white balance, that sort of thing. Take note of the, any of the network information if you are using DHCP. You can plug in and back up your cameras to an external device if you want to. Now quickly, let's take a look at some examples of the footage taken straight out of the NVR. For our first example, this is an outside shot with the driveway camera in full daylight. In our second example, this is an early evening shot of the driveway. This is a great example of what it looks like right before it transitions from color into night mode. For this next example, we're gonna see a full night vision shot of the driveway. Our next set of examples are coming from the basement camera. Now this is an example of what an indoor camera will look like in various lighting conditions. So this first example is when the lights are on in the basement and there's a ton of activity. So this is a good example of a bright indoor situation. The next example we're gonna take a look at is a full dark example. So this is all the lights out, it's dark at night, so it's pitch black in the basement right now. This is what the night vision looks like in black and white. Now for this example, we'll see the human detection pick me up and switch from the infrared night vision to color night vision. So OMO actually offers different ways of accessing your NVR other than connecting a monitor into the HDMI port on the back. Now they have a PC client, a Mac client, a web direct client, which means you just go to an IP address. And they also have a mobile client for both iOS and for Android. Now the mobile app seems to work pretty fine. It is pretty generic. I did have a problem with the PC app. The PC app seems to not run on Windows 11, no matter what you do. So I kind of abandoned trying to get that set up and working, and I was able to get the web version working, but there is a few tricks you have to do to get it running in Windows 11. And you have to use the compatibility mode in Internet Explorer. It did take me a little while to figure out how to get to this compatibility mode, but I'll quickly show you how to set this up and use the web version. Now it only works in Microsoft Edge. It's not gonna work in Chrome or Firefox, but we can get it set up in Edge on Windows 11. So to do that, we have to open up Edge, then we go to the three dots in the corner and go down to settings. In here, there's a button for a default browser. Now, if you do not see this Internet Explorer compatibility page, you're gonna have to set your default browser to Edge. But not to worry, after we get this set up, you can swap back to your normal default browser and Edge will remember that you wanna use compatibility mode. So to do that, we need to, if you have to, you have to set it as default and then you'll need to restart Edge. So close it out, open it back up again. Then you should see this Internet Explorer compatibility. So what we need to do is we need to change this, allow sites to be reloaded in Internet Explorer mode, set this to allow. Now we're gonna go ahead and navigate to our NVR. Now you'll notice when you get here, it says, please install latest plugin, close your browser before installation. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing to click on because we're running in Edge mode right now. So to switch to Internet Explorer mode, we need to click the three dots and then scroll down here to reload in Internet Explorer mode. Click that. It's going to reload it with an Internet Explorer engine. And then you should see at the top here a plugin. Now, since mine's already been installed, I don't have the yellow banner anymore, but you can click on the yellow banner and then at the bottom here, it'll pop up and prompt you to download the plugin. Do not install the plugin while Edge is open. You need to close out of Edge, go into your downloads folder, find the plugin and run it. Once it's installed, then you can relaunch Edge, go back to this IP address. You may have to set it back into compatibility mode, but then it will prompt you at the bottom. So then at the bottom, it will prompt you if you want to allow this plugin to run. Now, I'm sorry, I had already installed this and I can't actually uninstall the web plugin, so I can't show you here on screen, but that's the quick instructions on how to get that set up. Once the plugin runs, you should see the yellow bar disappear, and then you're able to go in and log into your NVR. And to know what's working is you should see camera views pop up. Now you do have to click on the individual cameras to load the camera views, and then whichever one you have selected, you'll hear the audio playing from it. Now then you can go to playback here and this will allow you to search through all the different playback for the different cameras. So for example, this is my basement camera and as you can see, it was completely dark all night long. But this gets you a good idea of what the night vision looks like on this camera. Now, of course, I have another camera down here. That's why you're seeing this little halo of light coming from over here. But for the most part, I mean, you can make out pretty good details down here with the built-in night vision. Now, down here at the bottom, you have some options. You can take a snapshot. You can start clipping to make a save. Once you make that clip, you can save it out. And then you can enable digital zoom, which this will allow you to click and zoom in on a certain section of the footage and enhance it. Of course, I'm running 
4K monitors, for me, it doesn't really look that much better. But if you were running a low resolution monitor, this would let you pan and zoom around the frame. You could make customized tags for certain events, and you can also enable and disable the sound. So over here, this is how you'd zoom in on the timeline. Now, if we notice right here, we've seen these pink events. These pink events indicate that the camera sees motion. So as you can see, there are people in the frame. Now you see that little red box that pops up that indicates the camera is seeing a person or a vehicle. So you see my three sons down here watching TV. If we switch to the driveway camera, we can get a better idea of kind of how this adapts in different light conditions. So you see right now, there's a bit of a shadow behind my house and we can see the outdoors. So it's a little blown out up here, but I still have pretty good resolution. I mean, I can see the scratches from the gravel on my driveway. Now, if you look in the playback here, you'll see two different lines, the bottom and the top. The bottom line indicates standard motion. So anytime there's enough pixels shifting in the camera system, it will mark that as a motion event. But if you look at the top line, there you see there's two different sets. The top line indicates one of the vehicle or person detection searches. So that makes it much easier to dig in and find when somebody drives by or comes into your driveway. So you see every time we move one of these, you'll see it detected a vehicle driving by. And that's even a partial vehicle driving by. We'll go over here, we'll see motion and look, and then there's somebody walking their dog. That's the live view and playback features. Um, if you wanted to tweak any of the settings, we'd go into setup. If you notice, a lot of the setup mirrors what we've already taken a look at. So we're gonna skip through a lot of those things. I'll just go over a few of the other features. So we've already gone over the system and the cameras. If you go down here to human and vehicle detection, this allows you to set an area similar to what we saw when we're using the mouse on the actual NVR, but we can set the actual areas that we that we wanna have the human, human and vehicle detection active in. So if I wanted to disable, say, the road, I didn't care about that, I could draw an area here and limit it to only this area, and then I can also set the sensitivity. This is something you're gonna to wanna to tweak as you use the camera for a little bit. We also have the ability to set it to a schedule and tell it what to do whenever there's a trigger. So we can tell it to record if you have multiple cameras and you see motion on the driveway, you want it to start recording somewhere else, you can do that. You can also have it sound the buzzer on the unit or send an email. So you can do this for any of the cameras. You can set different areas for each camera, make sure you clear it first, and then you wanna set the new area that you only want to detect that motion. You can also obviously get to standard things like how much capacity is left on your hard drive. If your cameras are equipped with alarm inputs and outputs, you can set those up. We've got the network tab we talked about before. You'll find your QR code right here for setting up the mobile app. And again, this is gonna use their servers to transmit your data back and forth. And right here is where you can set up your email alerts. And I've got a link down in the description to how to set this up for Gmail. Um, it's just a generic link on how to set up SMTP for Gmail. Most people use Gmail, so I uh, figured that'd be a helpful tip. You can set up new users if you want to. And then here's where you do maintenance on the cameras. Real quick, before we get to my final thoughts, let's take a look at the mobile app and see how to get that set up and functional and what differs with it. So once you have the mobile app installed on your phone, all you have to do is scan the QR code. There's no login necessary, just as long as you have that security code, it's able to find your device, which is good and bad. If you do wanna set up secondary login, that is an option in the app. You can require login where you have to log into account and know that code. So you'll see the live view is pretty standard. We're basically just seeing what we saw on the PC version. If you click the three dots in the corner, it allows you to go to devices and this is where you can change settings on your NVR. This isn't as full featured as the settings are on the PC. So this is more for just tweaking a few things like playback quality and things like that. So we go to live view, we can tap images and then do four and it's gonna show you four up images on there. So from here, you can obviously take a snapshot, you can record video, you can change the quality. So if you are wanting to zoom in on something, either on playback or live view, you can click quality and set that to high. It's gonna be then pulling down the high quality version of the videos. And then of course, you can tap on whichever one you want and then be able to listen to the audio coming from that particular camera. Now it does say two, two way audio down here, but that does not function for these cameras. Same thing as the PTZ. Obviously these aren't PTZ cameras, so it doesn't function. And you can set each camera independently for its quality. So I could say, if I don't want the downstairs camera at full quality or the driveway I want it to be in medium and I want the downstairs camera to be in high, I can set those as well. You can also tweak the image settings here. So if you're wanting to go through and adjust brightnesses and things like that, you can set those right here. And you can do some limited device configuration from clicking that button. Again, this app is more generic. So you might see features that are not available in your particular cameras. Some other cameras support, you know, other features. So that's why it's in the app. But if you, you run into something where it's a blank page, it probably means it's not supported. You can go into playback from here and be able to watch the playback just like we saw over here on the computer. So then I'm gonna go ahead and select driveway camera and what date, so we're gonna say today, it's fine. So now I can see the footage down here and if you notice at the very bottom, you'll see different colored lines. So very similar to what we saw in the PC version, there are different colored lines down here. And you can grab with two fingers and, and drag and be able to zoom in on that timeline. So if we go here, we'll see a, a purple line right here. So we see the standard pink line indicating that there was motion and then we see the purple line indicating a person or a vehicle. So again, it allows you to scrub through and quickly find the footage you're looking for. So it's this is super nice for something that records 24 by seven because it makes it much easier to go in and find out you know when there is an event. I know you can enable push notifications by clicking on the three lines at the top, clicking the me, 
going to general, and then you can turn on push notification settings and turn it on. Now, if you do set up alarms in the app, you can have those trigger push notifications on your phone. So to do that, we click on the three dots, the three lines, go to alarm notifications, allow notification, and then we can check that on. Now, anytime there's an alarm that you've set up in the NVR app, it will send a push notification to your phone. So this is a good alternative to using email. And if you see here, <clears throat> we actually have push notifications now for human body detected, vehicle detected, that sort of thing. And then you can click on the camera reel and it will take you right to the playback point. So this is super helpful. To be honest, I had to dig a little bit to set this up, but that's really cool that you can actually get push notifications. So this is more akin to a wise or ring where when you get a human body detected, it will send you a notification. So you can sort by clicking the triangle at the top and then making it VCA. And VCA would only be for vehicle or human detection. All right, so there's a quick run through of the mobile app and the PC app. So let's jump in and talk about my final thoughts on this product. Now I understand this was a quick overview of the product, so I apologize if I missed anything significant. Overall, I think it's a strong standalone system for video recording because these are 4K cameras. So you're capturing a lot more data than you would with some of the lower resolution cameras. And you can do a lot more with a wider angle. With these cameras, you get the ease of setting up with PoE cameras, but you also get a few additional features that you don't find on most DVR systems. These features come in handy when you're digging through a lot of recording looking for a specific bit of footage. Overall, I think the system would be great for somebody with a specific project in mind. What I mean is if you wanted to set up cameras around your outbuilding, the outside of your office, or even the, the perimeter of your home. If you're looking to do one major project where you're gonna install all these cameras at once, a system like this would be probably a good idea. This is also best for somebody who wants a standalone system that doesn't require any cloud connectivity whatsoever. So this is gonna be best for somebody who wants something that's gonna be completely standalone and that you're not gonna to wanna to integrate with a system like Home Assistant. So the system's gonna work great if you want 24 by seven recording and all your cameras in one place. Now who this isn't for is somebody who wants to use a multitude of different brands and technologies of cameras. So if you have Wi-Fi cameras or cameras on different segments of your network, this isn't really gonna work well for you. Even though this NVR system does support some standards like ONVIF and RTSP, if your network is segmented or you've got something running on Wi-Fi, you're not gonna be able to bring those camera feeds into this DVR. And as of right now, I can't find any really easy way to pull a stream out of the NVR. I'm sure if I did some poking around, I could find an ability to pull a stream out and put it into something like Home Assistant, but as of right now, I couldn't find one. I've also collected some feedback on some bugs that I found with the system and with things like the PC app not running on Windows 11. And I've passed those on to Ownwoat. Hopefully they'll get those corrected soon and get a new version out to fix those problems. But again, if you're looking for a high quality security system that's not gonna break the bank, this might be the solution for you. Now, if you're interested in picking one of these kits up, I've got links to all the major kits down in the description below. And keep a lookout on the pinned comment if any sales do come up during this Black Friday and holiday season. And again, I wanna thank Ownwoat for sending me this camera system to check out and and of course, for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you do have any questions about this product, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And if you're shopping for cameras this holiday season and wanna see reviews that I've done on other camera brands, you can find my playlist right up here above. And of course, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video.